So I had each of your groups take a set uh, and determine for that set what was its set of interior points. That set, by the way, is a set that we call the interior of the set. So that's what we've written here on the first lines. Um, also determine what is its set of accumulation points. Sometimes they write that set E prime. Uh, it goes by a variety of names. Sometimes it's called the, I want to say the derived set. I don't know, that's really archaic. Uh, but it's the set of all accumulation points. What is the set of all isolated points? And what is the set of all boundary points? And sometimes we use this partial derivative D that you hardly ever see anymore. Um, sometimes it gets used to represent boundary uh, in notation, so boundary of E. Um, and then using these results, say whether the set that you got was an open set or a closed set. Um, so I've spot checked all the answers that are on here for, for validity. So these are all, these are all correct answers. Um, and the point that I want to make about these is on these last two lines. So we had two out of these four sets that we decided were open sets. Um, what is it in the results up here that tip us off to those sets being open? What's our definition for open set? On the one hand, our definition of open says, uh, let me jump back to, here it is. Our definition of open is that all the points of the set have to be interior points. On the other hand, the definition of interior point already specifies that interior points must belong to the set in the first place, right? Interior points can't come from outside of E. Um, and so another way to think about it is that because every interior point already belongs to E, we already know that this line is going to be a subset of that line. But if the subset also goes the other way, if every point on this line is also a point on this line, then we have an open set. So really what we're saying is that sets are open exactly when these two are equal to one another. When they are equal as sets. And that's the case for both of these examples. So that's what made those two open sets. Um, what about our one example on this list of a closed set? What information in this table is telling us that this is a closed set? OK, so that's, that's kind of a clue in the beginning. So there are no interior points at all, which means that unless our set in the beginning were an empty set, then it's certainly not going to be open. Um, but. By itself, that's not enough to guarantee closure. Huh? The accumulation so for close, we're looking at whether or not the accumulation points, all of the accumulation points, also belong to the set. So whether or not this second line is a subset of our original set. So there's the, the comparison that we're looking to make here. That what we needed to know was that this was a subset of that. And that's the reason why that was a closed set. Uh, it's not generally true um, that a set is going to contain all of its accumulation points. Because, for example, even just looking at group ones, right, there is a point, there's a real number, three, which is an accumulation point of this set. But three didn't belong to the original set, which is why that original set wasn't closed. But if the accumulated set is a subset of the original, if every accumulation point belongs to the set, then that's what we mean by closed. Um, so that's sort of how we can navigate some of these things. Um, it also turns out, and this is probably my favorite, my favorite theorem in this entire chapter, um, because it gives us a clue as to how these ideas generalize outside of real analysis and into other areas of mathematics. What do you think is another relationship between openness and closeness? So we've seen examples of sets that are one but not the other, right? We have sets that are open but not closed. Here's a set that's closed but not open. But then here's an example of a set which is neither. So it's not true that every set which is not open is closed and vice versa, right? We can have it be neither. We can have it be both. Um, but let me put it this way. Let's suppose that I take, uh, I take this set. No, let me take this set here. So this is the real numbers take out the naturals. So we've taken the real line and we've just plucked out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. Right? So we create all these little holes. Um, we decided that that was an open set. Uh, and the reason it was an open set, if I can just draw a diagram of it real quick. So we take out all the natural numbers, um, but we leave all the rest of the reals. Right? So 1 is gone, 2 is gone, 3 is gone, 
but we have everything in between. It's an open set because if I pick any element, I can stretch out my arms at least a little bit, and my entire open interval there will remain inside of this set. Because it turns out that this set can be written, another way to think about what r minus n looks like, is it's made up of a bunch of open intervals. Everything from minus infinity to 1, union with the open interval from 1 to 2, union with the open interval from 2 to 3, and so on and so on. Right? Um, and so it's made up of a union of a whole bunch of these little open intervals. And so it's not surprising from that perspective that this is an open set. Here's a question. What would the complement of this set be? Yeah, so the complement of this set is just the natural numbers. It's everything which is not not natural. Therefore, it is natural numbers. What can we say about the natural numbers as a set? Is it open or is it closed? closed. It's a closed set. How do we know? <laughs> well, it's a, the natural numbers are a closed set. And one of the reasons, so we, we, we're building to a theorem here, but one of the reasons the natural numbers is closed what kinds of points make up the natural numbers? Of our, of our list of four things here, what are the points that make up the natural numbers? Are they interior points of n? If I'm standing on a natural number and I stretch out my arms, I'm not going to remain all within n, right? all within the natural numbers. So no point of the natural numbers is, uh, is interior. So we have this empty interior that Brennan was telling us about. Um, how about accumulation points? Is there any real number on which I can stand and stretch out my arms and get infinitely many natural numbers within my arm's reach? No. Not possible. So there are no accumulation points for the natural numbers either. Um, how about boundaries? Uh, is there any place where on the natural numbers where I can stand and in my arm's reach I have, in any of my arm's reaches, I have both natural numbers and non-natural numbers? Yeah, in fact, every natural number is a boundary <coughs> uh, for the set of natural numbers. How about isolated? What points are isolated in the natural numbers? Every natural number is an isolated point of that set. Right? Um, and by the way, the fact that there are no accumulation points for n, what does that tell us about whether n is a closed set? Because it contains all of its accumulation points, all none of its accumulation points. Right? So in fact, every set that has no accumulation points is going to be closed. Because vacuously, it's going to contain all of its interior points. Um, so that's an illustration of the theorem that you're working on on the back side of this activity, which is that another way of looking at the relationship between openness and closeness, it's probably the best way to look at the relation between openness and closeness, is that a set is open if and only if its complement is closed. And a set is closed, therefore, if and only if its complement is open. Right? Um, so Sometimes it's easier to prove a set is closed by making an argument about accumulation points. But accumulation points are nasty to work with because they have this weird infinitely many points within my arm's reach. It's kind of a hard definition to use directly. Right? It's often much easier in the service of a proof, if we're trying to prove something is closed, prove that its complement is open. And then this theorem will tell us, by virtue of the complement being open, that the original set is closed. And this is the notion that as long as we know what one of these two terms means in mathematics, we automatically can say what the other one means if we have this theorem at our disposal. Um, and in a course that generalizes some of the ideas of real analysis, a course like point set topology, for example, um, this is how you define closed uh, in a more general context. All we do is we define what it means to be open, which is what it means to use the word topology, it turns out, um, and then just say that every set whose complement is, is an open set is what we call closed.